I guess most of you will probably recognize this part. If you own a Audi TT Mark III, this is more or less one of the most common issues people have. And it costs a lot of money to replace because you need to buy the whole unit. And um, yeah, I'm going to explain right now what is the issue. The issue is this is a license plate light and the trunk or a boot opener or button. What happens is even though it does have a sealant like a rubber grommet or sealant on the sides, the water that goes under the spoiler that comes up, up and down finds its way into this area through the hole which uh, houses the cables and everything for the license plate light and the button itself and then uh, you get a warning light on your dash that license plate light isn't working anymore it costs a couple of hundreds of euros or pounds to replace because like I said you can only buy the whole unit either looks like this or the other one which has the button a little bit on the side and it has a place for your camera rear view camera as well either way it's the same thing I've most obviously taken mine out in order to make this video and to show you how you can prevent this thing from happening because it is like I said one of the most common errors on the Audi TTs Mark III. Um, I did however I'm going to make a disclaimer I've broken off both of those clips while taking this thing apart there is a notch on the side over here so as it sits in the car it's from on the side and you're supposed to pull it out but yeah I've broken mine off there is a clip in the middle that is obviously broken and this clip secure between secures between these two clips and locks the thing in place one of the explanations that, that I have why I've broken, out, uh, I've broken out both of my pieces is because it was really cold when I was trying to remove them. So the plastic gets a little, little bit brittle. You live and learn, I guess. You live and learn. So basically the only way to get it out is to be really careful and just slowly pull it, open it like this and then probably take it uh, from the sides or something like that, like this and then pull straight downwards as the piece sits in the car or just straight off from this piece. Anyways, now that um, you have successfully done that, what you can see here is a little PCB with an LED on it, then a flat cable going to the middle and there is a PCB there as well, which houses the button and the connector for the cable and then goes all the way to the second flat, head, flat uh, cable to another PCB with an LED on it. You can remove this LED by unclipping it from here, like so. And then you are greeted with nothing much, really, because this transparent piece is welded to the PCB itself and there is another layer of clear plastics in here so one would say okay watertight no problem but anyways you can pull it out like as a whole unit sorry this one this one and the center piece which we are going to do right now but the point that I want to make is you can see those two um, soldering points where the where cable solders to the um, PCB. I hope the lighting is good enough. As you can see this one is really okay. But take a look at this one. I hope you can see it. If not I'm going to try to zoom in. 
digitally or however. You can see that it is already corroded. You can see though that those um, little points on the PCB are already corroded green and this connector is just about to get completely corroded off. So this is what happens is that um, people don't clean the drains for the rear spoiler regularly it clogs out and then water comes through this hole where this thing goes into the the boot cover or the boot lid and then it corrodes everything this thing this thing and the middle piece which is held in by a four Phillips screwdrivers screws sorry not screwdrivers <laughs> As soon as we take them out, you are going to be able to see much better exactly what's going on. Okay, like so. And the fourth one. Please be patient, we are going to come to the best part of it, which is how to prevent this from happening. There we go. As you can see, this is there is really not much. This is a rubber piece which has three notches on here. Okay, and then on this side you have three flat contacts and the PCB itself. Let's see whether we can take the PCB out. Yes, yes, we can. And this is the whole PCB. This is the whole thing. There are a couple of resistors, a couple of capacitors one whatever that is mosfet looks like but i'm not going to say it because i really don't know there is really not not much going on here i am going to take a couple of photos now so in case the video isn't clear enough so i have the photos but you can clearly see just how different those two connections are now, to get to the point without making this video way too long, I'm going to clean this thing. And the trick is really simple. It costs one euro or equivalently one dollar, one pound or somewhere in between one and two pounds or dollars or euros. And you're not going to believe it. It's a nail polish. It's a, in my case, and I like to use it really because it uh, helps you see through. It's a transparent top coat nail polish of any kind. Mine says gel on it. I know it looks stupid. And what you need to do, of course, if it's dirty like this, clean it out first. If not, just take a generous amount of nail polish and cover every single open metallic soldering point cable of course do not touch the pins for the connector but yeah just like that make sure it is completely covered in multiple directions with nail polish and what is this going to do without damaging any other proper electrical properties? It is going to make sure that this thing stays watertight. You see? See what I'm doing? Just gently covering every single soldering point of this thing as well as the soldering points of the cables both on the central PCB and on the PCB of the LEDs themselves you really need to put a generous amount in here like so just be careful of the pins for the connector okay we don't touch that because that that is concealed within the connector itself and we have no problems there on the other side there is really nothing much you can do because you don't want to be messing with those 
flat flat connector points flat touch points whatever they they are this is how much you need i'm going to use a, a really fine either either brass or a nylon brush i think brass is okay and just going to make sure that the corrosion that already took part here took place here sorry does not bridge the connections together okay you can do it with a nylon brush as well whatever you prefer and then take some more yeah once we are here we're going to clean the other one even though it's not corroded it's really much easier if you have a full bottle since mine is already half half full i'm going to say this way yeah there we go generously let it soak onto the Ooh, dropped some and by that you have protected your license plate light from going bad for one whatever it is in your country I mean it the price may differ but you got get the idea for less than five whatever it is you can protect your lights so they don't go bad really good really fast of course you don't need me to tell you that you need to clean everything out before putting it back together oh it's stuck really good i like to use brushes because they get into hard to reach places really good okay like so there we go all right there we are maybe even some more but you get the idea i'm not going to bother you with that you clean everything up and then just put it back together the way it came in so i'm going to let this thing dry first of course this thing goes in then the cover on top then the four screws in here and then you just clip the lights back in and that's it now we are back it's the next day and this is completely dried i have washed it because of all the debris that was inside so now we can start and this of course is completely dry the nail polish just need to check the orientation make sure that things go back just the way they were taken out of there are a couple of clips and, and pins so you really cannot go wrong by reinstalling these and you need to pull push them in until you hear a click a click here a click there and then this thing just I think that it just sits right there and it's a either a capacitive or just yeah whatever then once we have everything covered in nail polish everything cleaned out we are going to go ahead and put this thing back in and of course put all four screws back where they belong okay right And with that, 
uh, we finished protecting this for many years to come of course I'm going to put all four of the screws in so now you don't have to worry about water getting in or at least there is 90% less chance of the license plate lights going bad because of the water coming in of course you should also clean the drains of your rear spoiler every now and then to make sure that it stays nice and clean it is going to prevent water getting into the trunk lid anyways but this is the second best thing to, to do just protect these with a clear nail polish I have glued this thing I have glued this piece together so I'm going to probably try to 3d scan this and try to 3d print it just to see if we can make copies of these pieces because you cannot buy them separately and they break really easily just like this one did this one's washed and glued in and yeah like i said this is now properly done hope you like this video hope i i helped you save some money see you in the next one